Well, good morning, Sunday, April the 11th. I'm doing it again. Actually, kind of getting in ahead of uh, bad weather today that's supposed to start snowing about noon and then snow for the next two or three days. So <laughs> if I uh, am able to get out tomorrow, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be some snowy walking again, which I thought I was done with, but it's also windy, so I don't know how the, uh, sound maybe today. Just kind of do a variation of the walk along the creek. Uh, shortening it in one way and extending it in another so it should end up about the same length as usual. If you happen to catch this live on YouTube or Facebook as I'm doing it, you can leave a comment and I'll see it. It's cloudy today so I can probably read it a little more easily. Although, honestly, I should wear reading glasses while I walk just to read the comments sometimes. I said hi to Ryan the other day, and it turned out that it was actually not Ryan because I misread the name. It's actually Kay, not Ryan. I could have sworn it said Ryan. So I have a podcast to do today. I did the transcript yesterday, but I have to set up the web page and then, of course, do my intro and outro, get that recorded and get it uploaded. Uh, today's guest is... Well, come to me in a minute. Who is today's guest? Oh, <laughs> Sebastian de Castell, who's a, a selling YA... Well, he was also written adult fantasy, but... Uh, author from uh, the West Coast, Vancouver. We share a publicist, uh, Mickey Mickelson at Creative Edge Publicity. That's how I made the connection. But I thought of him because he was mentioned by previous guest, Chris Humphreys, whom I talked to, uh, to about a month ago, maybe. Um, and Chris had said that uh, Sebastian was one of his beta readers for material. And so uh, the name was familiar and I Looked him up and I thought, yeah, I'll talk to him. And I did. So that'll go up this afternoon. This week I also interviewed uh, Anna Masakat, is her name. Born in Poland, grew up in Germany, went to film school. Was a screenwriter. First started writing novels in German and was published by a major German publisher and won major German science fiction fantasy awards moved to the States and is now writing in English, cyberpunk. So she was very interesting to talk to. Um, I don't know if that'll be the next one or if the next one will be uh, David Ebenbach. Uh, depends on the timing of books and when they come out and when's the best time for the interview to come out. So I'll have to double check. Those will be the next two. And then this week I'm very excited. I'm going to interview uh, Jane Yolen. Look at, the, look at the amount of budding going on there. just in time for the snow. Started with hat and gloves. It's one degree with wind chill. Not down here. I'm not feeling any wind, but I could hear it in the trees. So I'm sure I'll encounter it as I get up higher here. to the dike. You can see that the creek appears to be ice-free now. I imagine there's still some on the lake. Now, it's got to be below freezing the next couple of days. So, see if a skin of ice reforms. It might. the wind up here and maybe even the beginning of precipitation. I thought I felt a little cold something. I guess there's still it's like 
there's still a little ice in the shaded side of the creek over there. It's hard to show it because of the bushes, but kind of a skin of ice. You can see that white streak. It takes a long time for the ice to go away. Just shows you how thick it is in the depths of winter. When we've had multiple above freezing days and high as 20 degrees already. Not today, or for the next few days. It'll be nice to make this walk with leaves on the trees, and as I pointed out back there, at least some of them are starting to bud. These bushes don't look very excited about the spring yet. Some of these other trees, but it varies by tree just as the loss of leaves in the fall is not the same for different species, different locations. The other thing I did this morning was uh, I'm mentoring somebody through Saskatchewan Writers Guild and I was reading her material, so. I've done that about three times now, three different writers. And in fact, I do do it freelance, you know, if you want a mentorship, contact me and for a fee, I'll be happy to help you with your writing. Yeah, so that ice is all gone now. And I guess that uh, goalie net that was frozen in the ice is now at the bottom of the river. And this way you can see there's a patch of ice still there where it's shaded. I think that's ice. If you're going to go left this time, take the path down to the bridge and then walk back along Regina Avenue. Just to be different. I mean, I've walked this way before, but I haven't walked back along that stretch of Regina Avenue, so that'll be new. Again, if you happen to be watching on Facebook or YouTube, if you leave a note, I will see it and respond. Very gray day today. I've had lots of these with a brilliant blue sky, but not today. I think it's actually two systems that are coming. It's not just one that's sitting and snowing for two or three days, but two systems one after the other, if I read the forecast correctly. The heaviest snow will be even to the east of us, but we're supposed to get quite a bit here. It's that time of year when you always hope the snow's almost done. Well, there's ice right here next to me still where it's shaded by the fence. So it takes a long time to get rid of it all. And it wasn't even a particularly heavy snow here. So you're always thinking, that's it, there'll be no more snow, and then there's more snow. As late as uh, Victoria Day, I can remember Victoria weekend, Victoria Day weekend snowstorm several years ago. I remember the year I came back from uh, university in Arkansas. Got back in early May and there were still snow drifts under the trees in that kind of winter. In the 70s, we had a lot of snow and cold weather on the prairies. It's funny, I remember one chorus tour. We went to, uh, just down to Montana, North Dakota kind of thing from Western Christian College where I attended and where my dad taught and was the choir director. And we were buried here. Huge snowdrifts across the road had been plowed out because the school was out at the uh, former Commonwealth Air Training Command base outside Weyburn at the Weyburn Airport, about four miles out of town. So the road was sometimes uh, quite snowed in, had to be plowed on a regular basis, especially that year. And yet we got real, literally across the border into Montana I don't know what small town it was. 
and there was no snow. It was, it was almost what I, like what I expected when I was a kid moving up here from Texas, which was as soon as we got to the border, I thought there should be this wall of snow because we were in Canada now. <laughs> I guess I didn't really think that, but I kind of did. And uh, yeah, it was almost like that in reverse. I remember we all got out and played in the grass because uh, we hadn't seen any <laughs> yet. A couple of geese, there's always geese. Yeah, there are still some patches of ice, not a lot. lonely on the path today. It is Sunday morning and the weather's not all that great. But usually you at least see more dog walkers. I did see some, but usually that's who you see. If you have a dog, you pretty much have to walk. It's kind of like having a live stream. This gimbal is kind of like my dog. I take it for a walk, but I don't have to clean up after it, so there's that. Should have taken the little path over there to cut through the park just to be more interesting, but this is interesting too. I hope. If anybody's watching besides my wife. Hi Margaret Ann. Hi Shadow Paw, if you're watching. He was asleep, but he was close enough to watch to the TV if he wanted to. He does watch sometimes. He likes programs with animals. He'll sometimes watch for a little bit, especially cats. Cats make him perk right up, and birds. I think the he watched quite a bit of The Mandalorian once. I think he liked the little critters that were in that particular episode. Even if they were aliens, alien critters. Some gulls there. This is the uh, Albert Street Bridge, and that's the dam that forms Wascana Lake on the creek here. Well, technically, I guess. No, yeah, I would flow this way. So yeah, this would be the dam that forms the lake. Where's the dam that forms the lake? All right. We'll just walk up here to Regina Avenue and then walk back the same direction, but along Regina Avenue. Trying to keep up a brisk pace. <clears throat> Just Canadian flags on the bridge now. For a while we had Union Jacks. I think that was for uh, Commonwealth Day a while back. And then for a while we had Canadian and Greek flags. I never did find out why. Greek flags up there. A lot of Greek restaurants, but I don't think it was a Greek restaurant today. This had something to do with Greco-Canada relations. Okay, now we're going back along this side of Regina Avenue. A long straight stretch into the wind, I just discovered. So, I hope the wind noise isn't too annoying. This is the road that red, runs straight to the airport. I've walked along it, or around it, down on the other side of Elphinstone. I haven't actually walked along this stretch of it with the camera. It's got some uh, interesting houses along here, I like that one. For some reason, I like that kind of Tudor look with the half-timber thing, so that one's kind of appeals to me. And there's some interesting roof lines and windows along here. There's someone with a dog. Oh, 
Not a single comet yet. Everybody must be asleep. Although, out west, I mean, not east, west, east. I always get those confused. Uh, it's two hours later, so. Or three, or three and a half if you go to Newfoundland. Newfoundland, which we have done, and I would like to do again. I love St. John's. Number of older houses along here, then there's some brand new ones. Oh, there's a comment from Roger. Uh, thanks to your walking videos, I no longer have to go to the house to walk. <laughs> well, I'm glad I was able to make you feel as if you've been walking. That's halfway to walking. Oh, good morning. That's from Hong, I guess. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce your first name. I apologize. Calgary. What are those black things on the trees? Um, they're bands to keep, well, two things. Two insects are the problem. There's a, a moth whose uh, uh, caterpillars are called canker worms. And they, uh, the females are flightless. So in order to lay their eggs in the trees, they have to climb up the trees. So the bands are to keep that from happening. Because if they get up there, lay their eggs, the caterpillars eat the leaves, shred them. Looks quite sad. And then, because they have to get back down to the ground, I guess, to do whatever it is to turn into moths. I guess there's a uh, uh, cocoon for formed at some point. They bungee jump out of the trees on long, <laughs> sticky threads. They are really annoying. You'll be riding your bike or walking along, and all of a sudden there's a worm on you, or you quite often get home and you'll find a canker worm on you. So, uh, very annoying. So that's what that's about. They also are for, uh, similarly, tent caterpillars, which you sometimes see in trees that form these huge networks of webs. So you're supposed to band them twice a year, I think, in the spring and in the fall. You're supposed to take them off in between. Uh, not everybody is very good about that, including us. So sometimes they're on year-round, although this is probably the time when they're supposed to be there. And it's just, uh, it's usually fiberglass insulation covered with plastic taped to the tree. And then it's uh, smeared with uh, some kind of grease, which traps the moths if they try to climb up the tree. Not the first time I've been asked that. <laughs> It uh, seems to be a very Saskatchewan thing, though they must do it elsewhere because not like the moth that makes canker worms is unique to us. Stay on the straight and narrow here, straight up Regina Avenue toward the Regina International Airport. I'm feeling the wind, so there's probably some wind noise. My wind sock is a little piece of cotton taped over the microphone hole. And it actually cuts out quite a bit. It's not perfect, but I don't think even a full windsock actually completely stops. I mean, I could get an external mic, but it's not like I make any money doing this, so... I think if I've listened to them, they're not too bad. I think we'll live with it. Probably could use a new cotton bowl, though. ball, though. It's kind of flattened out. Maybe that's not cool. <clears throat> there, if you've walked with me before, is Waterfall Park, which I often walk through, but not today. I'm sticking to my straight and narrow guns all the way to the corner up here. Creek. 
we'll walk along that coming back. And again, well, very shortly, I'll be walking along it on the other side of Elfins. Wascana Creek. The reason I don't walk along Regina Avenue is because it's kind of boring. It's just this long, straight sidewalk. Once you get to this part. I can be naughty and cut across, across the grass. Cut the corner a little bit. Well, the cutting is good since it's going to snow and this will all be wet again very soon. Like this later today. Right now it's pretty dry. There's Waterfall Park that I've walked through. Well, heck, since I did this, let's walk through it again. little bench there under the trees and over here too. <laughs> Always careful going down the stairs when I'm carrying this because I'm not looking at my feet. Still quite frozen down here in the shade. That's where the waterfall will be. And there's this little, oof, see, there's a step I didn't see. This little will be a stream. Take this little footbridge over it. So it's a nice little space. People get wedding photos taken there and stuff like that. We will go, uh, let's see. It'll just dump us into grass. So we'll follow the path. Oh, and the stairs are way over that, so that was kind of out of the way, doing it this way, but okay. I've never walked on this part of the path either. So here you can see the whole park. It's very nice when the water's coming in the waterfall and it's all green. Good place for wedding photos and that sort of thing. Picnics, I guess. Probably better for picnics in some places because not as many geese as you get over around the lake itself. So my shortcut was actually probably longer than if I'd just gone to the corner and turned right. But Back into the wind. So, Kickstarter funded this week. If you uh, haven't walked with me before, I ran a Kickstarter to uh, fund a anthology of uh, short stories by authors who were guests during the second year of my podcast. As I mentioned, I have an episode going live today. So it's going to have 24 short stories in it, 18 originals, 6 reprints, big names, international bestsellers, award winners. It's funded. I asked for 15000 I got 16,862 when it was all over. Now the real work starts. I have some stories in hand already. Others will be coming. I have to edit them. I have to issue contracts. I get to pay authors, which as a freelancer I quite enjoy. I mean, I'd rather get paid, but I don't mind paying other authors. It makes me feel good. Especially when it's not my money. <laughs> it's money that I raised for the purpose. Uh, yeah. Should be out commercially in ebook and trade paperback and possibly hardcover um, this fall. 
possibly audiobook. I do ask for those rights in the contract. I didn't do an audiobook version last year. Audiobooks are quite popular, but they're also an enormous amount of work. Now, I could find another narrator to do it and not do it myself, which is probably what I would do. Um, if I could find someone to do it on just a royalty basis. But I didn't look into it for the last one, so I still could, I think. I have to look at the contract again. I might do both of them. Let's see. Books published by Shadowpaw Press, which is my little company named after our black Siberian cat, who may be watching this. He was on the couch in the direction where he could be watching the TV. I suspect I'm not of that much interest to him. And uh, <coughs> Shadowpaw Press, as I've said elsewhere, is just me and the cat, and he's largely a figurehead. <laughs> he does very little work. Very little work. <clears throat> There's an orange cat in our neighborhood who comes to our front step because he considers the outside of our house part of his territory. <laughs> and uh, we have these side lights with screens in them, which we've been opening up as the weather got nicer. And so Shadowpaw likes to look out of those, and they have had words and a bit more than that, Shadowpaw has made an attempt to get through the screen at this other cat. Clearly he thinks that's part of his territory. So we have to watch that. So I guess that's Shadowpaw's contribution to Shadowpaw Press is keeping it safe from the depredations of orange tabbies. I'd say he was a Garfield-like cat, this other one, but he's too skinny for that. All right, coming up to the creek here. I'm gonna cross the bridge and then walk along the dirt path along the creek. I walked along it the other way yesterday. Today, I'll walk along it this way. reason there haven't been enough foot traffic in the grass on this side to make the same kind of path as there is on the other side. I don't know why. I mean I could walk in the grass along here. We'll go get on the dirt path on the other side. Some joggers now and of course people and dogs. large gathering of them. Okay. I'm going to turn around the end down here. Head along the dirt path. Water here. I don't see any ice even on the shaded side over there. <laughs> kind of uneven. I've got to watch my feet. I've pointed out before to those who aren't from Regina that uh, somebody, I was walking around the lake the other day and Somebody was following me. She was in India, I think. And she was commenting on, you know, how wonderful it was to see such unspoiled landscape. And I had to ex tell her that there's nothing about this landscape that's natural. Possibly the creek. But every tree in Regina was planted 
There might have been some willow bushes along the creek, likely were, but everything else was planted. And around the lake, all the trees were planted. The lake was not even natural, it's, it's man-made. So it was and is a lovely landscape. The only thing natural about it is the fact that, well, the trees are natural. But they didn't grow there naturally. And the uh, birds are natural, but they wouldn't be there if the lake hadn't been made by people. So it's actually a very man-made landscape in Regina. The natural landscape would be, I guess, short grass prairie. Our tall grass prairie. I don't actually know what kind of grasses were here. No, oh, there's the wind. Haven't taken my hat off today, so. When I worked at the city as a communications officer, kind of filming in for somebody who was on adoption the 20 years ago. time, the information we had was that there were something like 220,000 trees in Regina, every one of which was planted by somebody. There might be more now because the uh, neighborhoods have expanded. So call it a quarter of a million trees, not a one of which, well, okay, there's actually one in our backyard that wasn't planted, grew naturally. We kind of wish it wasn't where it was. Well, we may have it taken down, but... Obviously, once you have trees growing, they start to distribute seeds. But generally speaking, everything was planted. Here's the footbridge I did not cross over this time. Ooh, downhill from there. Oof. Got some more dogs, eight more dog, a more dog, one more dog. So I haven't walked along this path before with the camera. <clears throat> so this actually is a shortcut because the actual path that I usually follow is quite winding. This takes a big loop of it out. It just formed naturally from people wanting to walk alongside the lake, uh, the creek, rather than following that winding paved path. Ah, figures, now I got something in my eye. Trouble wearing contacts in Saskatchewan in the spring. Yeah, April is our windiest month, and there's lots of dust around that fell with the snow and then appeared after the snow melted. And when you wear contacts, you somehow manage to find those little pieces of grit that are flying through the air that nobody else notices. Eh, it's cleared away now. <sighs> I've kept this quite a brisk walk, so... Breathing a little harder than sometimes. that bush there. Alright, we'll get up here. Usually 
walk up there and then do my cut across, but since it's dry for the moment, I'll walk on the grass again. Cut off a bit there. largely melted now so it seems to have been dry. No need to go all the way to the sidewalk. Oh go over here by the ball diamond. Here's the park as a whole. This park. Diamond. Over there, as I pointed out before, is uh, Saskatchewan Express, which is a uh, performing company of young people, tours the province, auditions every year. They also have a, well, it's a former school, and the gymnasium at this end was turned into a nice theater. I haven't performed there, but uh, Lyric did the uh, 25th annual Putnam County Spelling Bee there few years ago. Very good performance. I think that's the only show I've been to in there, but they've certainly done others. They also have dance classes, musical theater classes, and drama classes, and all that sort of thing. Danny Balkwell is their artistic director, and uh, when I did my first show with Lyric in 1988, which is also when I met my future wife, uh, was it 89? I guess it would have been 89 because I came up here in 88 in the fall. Would have been in the spring of 89. He was playing that uh, rotten kid in uh, The Music Man and went on to have a pretty successful acting career. And, uh, I know he's in various things. I know he was in a production of ABBA, for example, at one time, of uh, Mamma Mia. And then he came back just a few years ago and took over um, Sask Express. Which had been founded and run for, since its founding, by Carol Gay Bell. I auditioned once. Couldn't do the dance. Too clumsy on my feet. Nailed the singing, couldn't dance. I'm at best a double threat, not a triple threat. I can act, I can sing. I don't dance, don't ask me. I can't dance, don't ask me. Another long straight bit as we head home now. Well, my home, not yours. I will take off my hat now that I'm not facing into the wind. Looking up a sweat. Last year, when I was still jogging, which I only did for about two months, I was proud of myself, but my knees wouldn't take it, so I'm not going to resume jogging or stick to walking. Uh, it was this stretch where I noticed that it wasn't as flat as it looked. It was actually quite uphill at one point. Well, for a, for a jogger of my caliber and mass, it seemed quite uphill. So I was glad when it uh, switched and started going slightly downhill again, somewhere along here. Don't notice it as much walking.
If I were jogging, there would be no talking. It would just be <gasps> not very attractive. It's not a heavy breathing channel, <laughs> which I'm sure exists. I'm not going to go looking for it, but it wouldn't surprise me. Dog walk around the other side. Haven't had any comments for a while. If anybody's still with me, please let me know. It's always nice to know I'm not alone. Well, I am alone. You know, really. <laughs> Despite the song from Into the Woods. Oh, I hate seeing posters for missing cats because then you imagine what if it was your cat. And Shadowpaw is entirely an indoor cat. It's nine years old. And although he's interested in the orange cat I mentioned earlier, it comes to our front step and has hit the screen with some force because of that cat. Uh, I don't think he can hit it hard enough to get out. And we always hear that. I don't... Uh, Try not to leave those open unless I'm close by. There's usually some warning, some moaning. Funny thing is, we don't know how he does it. He could be upstairs on my daughter's bed with walls and windows between him and the outside. And he'll suddenly jump off the bed and go dashing downstairs because he knows that cat is out there. This is a cat walking on bare ground or grass maybe grass he hears but I don't know just a sign of how sharp his hearing actually is somehow he knows either that or that's a sixth sense but I suspect it's just sharp hearing Bold choice of color on that house over there. Very bold. But you sure notice it when you walk by. That's the Elphinstone light up there ahead. I heard about this little almost looks like a treehouse. It's on top of the garage, an apartment, I guess. It has the French flag flying on it. Oh, I don't know why. Looks like it'd be a nice little room. Assuming that there's heat. Almost across the street again, heading home. Perfect timing. Now when I was jogging, I particularly liked turning this corner because this is quite a bit downhill as you head back to the river. So I was like, ooh, that's a relief. can see more of those tree bands along here that I was asked about earlier. I think these are elms. We still have lots of elms in Regina. Dutch elm has been in the city and occasionally a tree will get taken down, but it has not decimated the elm population or outright wiped it out. My father grew up in uh, Coffeyville, Kansas, and its elms were entirely wiped out by Dutch elm disease. So it had, you know, these kinds of broad shaded roads, and, and it didn't after a while. 
other trees I'm sure have been planted since then. But he remembered, I don't know if it happened when he was a kid or before he was living there, I don't know, but he would tell the story sometimes. Here we are back on College Avenue. Go down College now, but then I might uh, take a detour that I haven't taken before. Because College again is one long, very straight street. Oh, yes, I have worked up a sweat. Thank you for asking. Nobody asked, but <laughs> I provide my own questions if I'm not asked questions. Why do you walk to get to the other side? Oh, that's the chicken across the road. For exercise. And uh, why do I do the live stream? Because it motivates me to do the exercise. For some reason, it's way more interesting to walk while talking to your invisible companions which are sort of like, you know, <laughs> imaginary friends, I guess, as you walk. I don't know, you're not imaginary if you're watching this live or listening or watching it on the uh, uh, recording. But it kind of feels that way <laughs> when I'm just talking to this thing in my hand. Talk to the hand, that's what I'm doing. Anyway, it motivates me to walk. Which is good because this last winter between covid and everything else i was a chair potato and my gym closed down i was doing weights for two years pretty regularly that's gone until i find another gym once they're back into normal operation i might try to do that Now we'll walk up onto the dike, I think. Or I can go that way. Just takes me back to the street. Eh, I'll go that way just the same. I've walked along the dike more than I've walked down here. Or I could just cut across the grass, cut across the grass I guess. but the path is more visually interesting. Walk with me down the garden path. No gardens, but it is a path. I guess we can take that path, just to be different. Up here where there is a coming of ways. Oh, who's that? Uh, where are you streaming beside YouTube? Just Facebook. I was on a Periscope, but I think that went away. I don't have accounts anywhere else. And, you know, for the dozen people who watch these, <laughs> I don't know that having any more accounts is important. Oh, I see. This does take me up on the dike. Oh, well. It's different. I know. If I had more accounts, maybe I'd have more followers. And I should look at that, I guess. Besides this being my motivation for walking, it is, of course, one hopes every once in a while somebody will say, oh, you write. And I'll say, yes, I write science fiction fantasy. And they'll say, where can I buy your books? And I'll say, they're available everywhere. And many of them you can get directly from me, either at edwardwilletshop.com or shadowpawpress.com. But they're also available through Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. Just Google me or... Search for me at any bookstore, and you will see I have written a great many books. I don't know if I've written many great books, but I've written a great many books. Here, back to the creek. We'll go up and uh, go down the stairs, I think. 
How long have I been walking? Oh yeah, this one will be about my usual length when I get home in about 10 minutes. I thought it might be a bit shorter, but I did kind of wander from the straight and narrow once I left Regina Avenue, which is very much the definition of straight and narrow. At least the sidewalk side. The road's not narrow. I got my exercise, which is the point. That into Shaw Regina, my little neck of it anyway. I will go further afield probably later. Takes a bit more planning. When it's nice, I'm gonna go park at the uh, Nexus Art Center and walk around the university campus from there. That takes you along the lake and that side of the lake. And then you can walk around the campus, which has some interesting buildings. I'd like to walk out along the pathway much further, but I need somebody waiting at the end because walking to the end and back would probably be three hours or so of walking. Certainly two, maybe three. <clears throat> But that would take me out by the uh, RCMP, barracks and museum, and uh, there's some more interesting parkland, mostly along the creek. I used to ride my bike out there. Oh, it takes you by the Regina Golf Club too, Royal Regina Golf Club too. I, oh, it's right over there, the third house in with the pointed roof beside the ultra-modern one. It's where I lived when I first moved to this neighborhood in the mid-90s. I lived there until I got married. And it so happened that my chosen one lived just a couple of blocks away up here on Hankus Crescent where we're headed, so that was convenient. Anyway, when I lived there, I used to do a lot of biking and I'd bike all the way out to the end of the path, but that's different than walking it. And I kind of got turned off of it because uh, there's a curved bit that goes under a bridge and somebody coming the other way did not slow down enough. And maybe I was too close to the middle too. And we kind of connected and we both went down and I found myself hanging over the guardrail, staring into the creek, uninjured. But if I'd hit my head, I would have been because I didn't have a helmet at the time because my head's so big, it's hard to get a helmet. <laughs> No smart remarks about the size of my head. Someone who walks around with a camera talking to himself, why should he have a big head? Um, and then the girl who was riding the bike, young woman, actually broke her arm when she landed. So I stayed with her until the ambulance came. That was not fun. And it kind of worried me about the uh, bike path, at least for any kind of biking at any sort of exercise level. And then my bike was stolen. And then it was stolen again. And at the moment I don't have one because it was stolen. So I haven't biked now in quite a while. Couldn't hold this in bike. I'd have to get a GoPro if I wanted to do something like this while biking. Which would be interesting. Probably for people to watch. But certainly you see that thing, sort of thing all the time. But uh, as I've said before, this was inspired by Walking Commuter. There's a guy named Gabe who walks around Manhattan doing this. Also talking to himself and his imaginary friend. I mean, he says he's getting all these comments on his feed, but for all we know, he's making it all up. Just like I could be making up every comment I respond to on here too. Because especially the YouTube ones, because they disappear once the live stream's over. I can't even go back and review them. So I could say, oh, thanks for following me, your majesty, and nobody would know whether that's true or not. Okay, almost home. One more block around the corner here. 
be at my traditional stopping spot, which is appropriately enough, a stop sign. When I'm coming from this direction, I usually stop with a view of the stop sign. This is Leopold Crescent. As I mentioned before, the house on the corner here was once used in a movie starring Linda Carter, Wonder Woman fame. <laughs> the whole neighborhood was dressed up to look American with like US post office boxes and there were American sheriff's cars and that sort of thing in the neighborhood because it was some sort of crime thing. I don't know exactly. I don't think I ever saw it, but I know they used that, that house there as the main location or one of the main locations. Here comes our corner. Oh. So if anybody's still watching live, thanks for watching this live. If you're watching the recording, thanks for watching the recording, if you got this far. And uh, we'll see what the weather's like tomorrow. If I think it's okay to take my phone out into it, uh, well, I'll take a walk in the snow tomorrow. But in the meantime, here we are to stop. Thanks a lot.